Hello and welcome to the Thursday, February 29th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I looked at uh, some of our honeypot logs and noted a sudden increase in requests for the URL forgot user password dot action. This URL appears to be related to the Atlassian uh, Confluence uh, product. At first I thought, hey, maybe this is just uh, someone trying to sort of uh, exploit a badly implemented forgot password uh, feature, but there seems to be more to it. The URLs, the params being passed to it, look a little bit more like uh, some kind of template injection or uh, deselization vulnerability. If anybody has any idea what the exact CVE number that may be exploited, uh, here is, uh, let me know. It uh, at this point really appears to be just scanning for uh, instances, not necessarily exploiting or launching a specific exploit, but we'll have to look at it a little bit further to really see what's going on here. So any hints about any recently patched vulnerabilities or so in forgot user password dot action are quite uh, helpful. And if you're running Confluence, well, uh, double check your logs and uh, see if it was abused uh, using this particular uh, URL. And you probably noticed about a few high profile compromises of healthcare businesses lately. Now, we always had attacks against hospitals that has been sort of going on for a couple years now. The latest big attack, and I may have mentioned it before in a podcast against Change Healthcare or Optum, did affect billing for a large number of pharmacies. Well, the FBI now is paying attention to the news too, and CISA and a couple other agencies have released a bulletin with some of the indicators of compromise and general techniques being used in these ransomware attacks that are commonly attributed to Alphabet or Black Hat. Now, one thing I just want to point out here, I usually don't talk much about breaches, but there are a couple important lessons I think that everybody can uh, sort of take from that particular document. First of all, don't worry too much about the specific domain names or uh, IP addresses. They probably have changed by now, but a couple techniques here. One, they're heavy on social engineering, basically posing as company IT and help desk staff apparently still works. Also, that multi-factor authentication is not necessarily phishing resistant. That's an important, if someone, somewhat subtle uh, difference sometimes. But if you are, for example, using one-time passwords, like your standard Google Authenticator, this is not phishing resistant because an attacker could trick a user into entering the credentials into the wrong website. Rule of thumb, if the user decides when to enter the credential, then it's not phishing resistant. So anything other than hardware credentials like FIDO2 and such that are automatically verifying what website credential is being sent to, well, are not phishing resistant. So definitely read the advisory, even if you're not in the healthcare business, and look for sort of these uh, techniques more than for specific indicators of compromise. One of the issues a lot of global brands have been struggling with is uh, bad guys registering lookalike domains for various brand names. I'm not just talking about the foreign characters here, but also slight variations of the brand name. Registrars now have banded together to create a new service, Global Block, that will allow you to essentially block the registration of trade trademarks related with various top level domains automatically. So you no longer have to individually register all of these lookalike domain names. The service is not free, costs apparently a few thousand dollars a year, but for some large companies, probably cheaper than manually registering thousands of domain names. 
What isn't quite clear yet is how this service will resolve some conflicts where a couple different companies own a particular trademark for various geographic regions or possibly for uh, different types of businesses, which uh, can happen uh, quite frequently. Also, of course, we had some cases where uh, copyright law like this or trademark law was used to sometimes suppress speech critical of a particular brand. This service is supposed to become generally available end of this week. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.